there is a new kit on the block and it's actually in beta now. I'm talking about Vue 3 and its composition API. And there have been a whole bunch of people who wrote articles and videos and they spoke on conferences about the new way Vue 3 works. But I haven't actually seen a piece of content that puts all of the things together and build you something in a simple way. Because we all, if we want it or not, kind of have to start using Vue 3 soon. So in this video, we are building a clone of TikTok in the browser using Vue 3 and its composition API. On top of that, I also used Feet, which is the new web development tool by Avenue, and it's just excellent. So we didn't use Snowpack or Webpack or all of that stuff. We're just using Vite and the new Vue 3 composition API. Are you ready? Let's kick this off. First things first, let's have a look at my little recreation of TikTok. Uh, beware, it's super simple. It's kind of just a scroller that goes vertically and plays a video, which is actually a TikTok video that I downloaded because I liked it. Um, I kept it this simple so we can actually focus on how Vue.js works with feet and how all the composition API things uh, work together. So let's have a look at my favorite videos. These doggos are so cute. Why don't you play? Oh, it had to replay. I didn't add loop in the video. So I have a Corgi myself. She's so cute. She's called Princess Nugget. Google it, you'll be happy. And then another Corgi. So this is actually Mad Max the Corgi who travels um, in the Metro with his owner everywhere. So that was it for the demo. As you can see, it's pretty simple. So um, why not dive in first, um, how to install Vite. Here we go. This is the Vite.js repository. And as you can see, this is really bleeding edge. We are talking 21 hours ago. We are talking 11 days ago, 21 hours ago, two days ago. A lot of stuff is changing here all the time. It's super bleeding edge. Also really fun. Um, so Feed is an opinionated web dev build tool that serves your code via native ES module imports during development and it bundles it with rollup for production. I don't think it's so much production ready for all users just yet. Um, it really focuses on new browsers and new JS APIs and stuff like that. But if you're surfing that, this is great. Um, it's not like Vue CLI that's super rich and has everything you've ever dreamed. It's a bit more bare bones, but it's also new stuff and we need new stuff sometimes. And this is just a lot of fun. Um, to install it, it's npm or yarn, init, vite app, and then the name of your project. It's that simple. Um, I've done it. I don't have to do this now on the video. You'll just copy paste it and run with it. So let's go to my terminal and I'll show you how fast it actually is. So I'm now starting the server and then just compare this to your Webpack server, right? Let's go. Done. It started. Holy moly. That is awesome. Um, let's go to the code and see what we get. We are now in the code. So let's have a look at what um, Viet actually created for us as a document structure. Um, the first thing that you'll notice is, that's different from Vue 2 is this line. So they created um, a property or a function called create app. And this is done for the future where what you could potentially do is create a variable of this, like const app equals this. And then you can add your directives, plugin stuff to that variable. And that also means that you could potentially make multiple apps. So it's just a bit more of a nicer global um, way to create your Vue app. Um, so then of course we have app.js, which is fairly simple. In my case, it's just the TikTok stream. That's all I care about. This is a very simple app, right? And this also looks like Vue 2. Um, there's not that much going on. So let's first have a look at this actual fancy Vue stream um, component that I built. And we'll just go over the things you see here as a base. And later on, we'll go into all the new stuff that we have here, right? All the Vue 3 stuff. But first, just as a base, how it works, um, what this thing does, it's actually a list of TikToks. 
right? And my list of TikToks comes from here. Right now, I just kept it super simple. I just found the video URL on the TikTok CDN and I gave it an ID and that's what it loops over. So we're looping it, right? And so what this thing does is it's using a V swipe directive. And I wanted to use a directive, first of all, because it's easier to deal with touch events because they're not native in Vue. Um, and on top of that, um, I wanted to know if directives still worked in Vue 3. So basically how this thing works, so let's have a look at the site. Right now you can see that um, I'm basically moving the whole TikTok stream. So the viewport is here and the whole stream is behind. So when I swipe up, I just move the whole stream one screen height. So when I go up now, you can see it's at 0%. When I go down, you can see it's at minus 100%. So for performance with CSS and transforms, or translate 3D in this case, this is just the faster this can get. And see the performance is really keen, right? It's really, it's really cool. Um, so now that we know how this works, um, I can also show you that this is actually done with a directive. Um, I'll show you this quickly because it's basically native JavaScript. So the one big difference in directives now um, with Vue 3 is that the naming of the hooks inside the, um, the directives is different, right? It's no longer called bind, but in this case it's called before mount. So they basically have the component lifecycle hook names aligned up now with the directive names. names. So I didn't read the docs properly, so I got stuck on this quite long. I even tweeted about it, like, please help me. And a bunch of people are like, dude, just read this. Like, oh, okay. And then I fixed it. So now on before mount, I just bind to the element that, I bind, that I'm binding to, which in this case is this big diff that holds all the TikToks, um, on touch start and on touch end. And if you move more um, than the 40 pixels that I say this is your minimum, it either goes to the next slide or the previous slide. And then binding is actually the um, whatever value goes into um, your uh, directive. And in my case, this is a function. So this is a little bit dirty, but this is just a simple demo, right? So I left it like this. It kind of means on swipe is now a function. So this is what's in the binding. So the moment I swipe up, it does minus one. And then when I swipe down, it does plus one. Um, relatively simple. So what it basically does is just moves um, this element. Okay, then of course I loop over the TikToks and there's one fancy stuff here, which is the ref. Let's leave that for now. Let's have a look at what the new few stuff is doing and then we'll go back to the ref and why that's important. So first of all, Few is now kind of exploded into a lot of smaller utility functions so you can compose your components better. That's literally what the comp composition API is doing, right? So to create a component, you now have the define component function. To do refs, you have a ref function. To do reactive stuff, you have a reactive function. Then we have computed, watch, and then a bunch of lifecycle hooks. Um, if you're a Vue developer, you kind of know those things. They're just now separate functions rather than stuff that comes in your Vue uh, component out of the box, right? So you can now um, change it up a little bit. So of course we need to define a component and then the name, directives, components, this is still the same. And here is the magic. Um, so you have a setup function, which is kind of the constructor of your uh, class, if you will. So this is really nice that it's done this way because now it works much easier with TypeScript as well. As well. Um, so um, this is what I wanna focus on for the moment and then the other stuff comes a little bit later. So um, what you can see here, this is reactive. This means um, Vue basically is built upon being reactive, right? I do one thing and something else changes in the DOM and it happens automatically because of this fancy templating language, the JSX stuff. So this is kind of the core of Vue.js. And so now rather than having it out of the box without you knowing how it works, you can actually say my component here is gonna hold all my reactive stuff. And all the other stuff that I make, it's not gonna be reactive. So it's, it's gonna be much more performant. And so my current slide, so when I swipe down, my slide goes from one to two to three, you know. Then the amount of slides is actually my TikTok JSON and how many items are inside. Um, actually, now that I think of it, this doesn't have to be in the state that's reactive because this will this doesn't move. So I, I already look at my own code and I'm like, oh, yep, let's move that out. 
if you didn't have Vue 3, you wouldn't know about this because it's not so obvious. So that's why it's so nice about this. I should have moved this out. I won't do it now because I don't want to break my code in the demo to you. And then style. So what I want to do is transform my Translate 3D based on whatever that current slide is, right? So if I have slide number two, it has to go minus 200%. If it's three, minus 300%, stuff like that. So for that, you need a computed. And we know computed properties from Vue 2, but now you can actually add that right into this directive or into this reactive thing. And this is so clean. This is the only thing I've had to do. And of course, apply those things to my template. So slide has always some sort of calculation for that percentage, right? And then so you see that style just here. So state.style. That's the only thing I had to do because now when I swipe, and because my swipe actually updates my current slide, because this is all reactive, my transform with my computed stuff changes because the current slide changes and everything is updated. This is the core of Vue.js, but now it's much more declarative and you can really see how it works. And that's so cool about this. Um, then there is also watch. We know watchers from Vue.js too, right? So what I do is I'm watching the current slide. So when it changes, I want to do an action. And um, this is specifically because I have videos playing, right? So if I swipe down, my previous video needs to pause and my next video needs to play. Um, that's something specific. So what I wanted to do is see how does watch work. So I'm watching the current slide change. Then I get my new item and my old item. So my new item is from one to two. So I kind of know um, I need to play the next one and pause the previous one. And this is where these refs come in. And this is something I struggled with a little bit in Vue.js 3 and I had to figure out what to do here. And basically what you can do to fire a function on a child component, in this case, one of the TikToks, what you can do in Vue 2 is you just do ref equals blah, blah. And then in your code, you can do blah, blah dot function and it fires a function in your child. Um, that's all nice and well. We all know how this works. It's awesome. If it's a DOM node, you get the DOM node from that ref, right? So, um, but in Vue 3, the composition API, you actually have to tell it, these are my refs because they are also reactive and you have to return them also. So what I had to do is actually, I said, these are my TikTok refs and it's a ref that's an array, <coughs> sorry. So that ref is an array. So um, how you fill that array is by actually looping over your TikTok with a V4. And now ref is actually also able to get a function. So now what I can do is I get the index for my TikTok data and each element that the ref loops over with the V4, uh, basically I push the TikTok ref's index um, with that element. So now this here, TikTok refs is now an array of the refs of my TikToks. And in this case, there are three of them. So now what I get to do, um, that that th those three TikToks also represent, like my current slide is one, so that's the first TikTok. My next slide is two, so that's the next TikTok, right? So what I can do is I will say, um, this I'm just doing this because I'm using, I'm starting with a one rather than with a zero in my indexes. So I can just say in my TikTok graphs, I have to use value because this is a proxy. That's a whole lot of video. We won't go into that now. I get the value of my ref and I say, give me um, the new TikTok that just became active and then hit play. So hit the play function inside that TikTok. Um, same goes for the old one. So the old items is the previous one um, from the watcher. So that's the previous active one. And then I want to pause that one. And then lazy is false, um, connects to the immediate is true from before, from view two in watchers. Um, so this basically saved me because I wasn't really, a, I didn't know what to do. So I just went on the internet, <clears throat> looked for a lot of stuff, couldn't find anything. And actually this saved me like being able to make refs um, an array and then actually re return that array. So that's the last thing I wanted to show you in here is that everything you had as a const in your setup, you also need to return it. 
because otherwise your template doesn't actually know anything about um, the constants that you set. So you, and I keep forgetting this and this is where it constantly goes wrong in my code or today that was the case. Um, and then of course I had the on swipe. So I look at the direction, I look at the current slide and if there are certain things matching, I will just not do anything because I don't want to go negative in my slides because there are no slides. This is just default carousel stuff, right? And then if all of that is cool, um, I set my current slide the plus one or the minus one. This is simple carousel style stuff. Um, now we haven't looked at one thing, which is actually the TikTok view itself. So this is basically the little TikTok video that you see. And um, the TikTok video again has a ref because I need to be able to on the ref do dot play, which is an HTML5 video, right? So I need to have that ref. Um, and there's a prop for the video URL. And uh, then I made a little SVG icon, which is like a little play icon. So when I click it, I want to do toggle play. And when I click the video, I want to do toggle play. And toggle play literally just checks, um, is it playing? If not, play it, else pause. Simple video behavior, right? And um, again, uh, oh yeah, this is actually important to say. So the ref has a naming convention. So to be able for your setup function to know what this ref is, you need to use the same name in your ref on here on line three, and you have to set it to being a ref here. And then when you wanna use it, you do fit ref in this case dot value, and you can do whatever you want. It took me a while to get this, but now that I have it, this is very elegant. And then I just return my functions. And of course I have a bit of CSS, very simple. I have some fancy aspect ratio, new CSS stuff. Because we have feet anyways, it's all new stuff. Nobody cares about the old stuff in this demo. So um, there you have it. It's literally very small and it's pretty elegant. It's all composed together. I could go even further and extract and do like a bit like React, like a use TikTok that has some functionality, but I didn't want to go too deep into that right now. Um, I hope this helps you and um, makes you look at Corgis. Because why not? Cargis, cargis. Um, thanks again. Um, I'll see you next time.